Welcome everybody. Um, I have with me uh, Jay Smith, who's a Christian apologist, an Islamic polemicist, um, an American who's well known on YouTube. And um, he's here today to talk to me and answer a couple of questions, uh, the answers to which I hope you'll find interesting. Well, hello, Kay. It's good to be here with you. Now, I don't know much about you. I think we have met two or three times when I was first, I uh, left three years ago in London. You came and we met there. And then just this last year, I was in London three times. And you, and so I bumped into you at Interesting at Speaker's Corner. So I'd like to know a little bit more about you. Can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you're doing? Yeah, um, I started um, after I became more committed to Christ again. Um, I started watching Speaker's Corner's videos and I heard your voice booming around the park. Um, I also heard an appeal from a different Christian asking for strong Christians to come along. Um, at that time, I thought, well, that's not me. I, I hoped it could be me, but I didn't think it was. And so I prayed about it for quite some time. And uh, a set of circumstances arose where an atheist, a friend of mine who I've known forever, um, just out of the blue said, uh, Kay, would you come to Speaker's Corner with me? Would you do me a really big favor and come with me? I'm frightened to go by myself. And I thought that was, well, it wasn't a coincidence. It was just an answer to prayer because I've been praying, should I go, should I go? But what I found is I just stayed at home and shouted at my phone quite a lot with verses and the answers to questions. And then, yeah, so I just turned up and um, I've been going for maybe six or seven months now, um, studying also theology. Um, yeah, I think that's it, unless you've got any other no, questions. Well, hey, let me ask you this. You've, um... I remember when I first bumped into you back at Speaker's Corner, you would sit at, you were in the crowd uh, when I was on the ladder, and then you came out afterwards uh, when many of us go out to have something to eat. And that's where I really learned that you have this heart to really reach Muslims. Um, what is your background in Islam? Can you give us a little bit of, have you had a background in Islam at all? Uh, yeah. Uh, so I grew up in an area that has progressively become more, um, Islamicized or influenced by Islam, London in general, uh, the UK, but most particularly my part of London. Um, and originally I had, through my education, I had um, a sympathy and a fear for Muslims. I remember many, many years ago when I, I was a committed Christian, but I wasn't an apologist and I wasn't a polemicist, I wouldn't have dreamed of telling somebody that their religion was incorrect because I didn't want to hurt their feelings or um, come across as maybe rude, something like that. And I had literally a vision of just billions of people, you know, burning eternally for the sake of me wanting to remain polite um, and to be liked. And I know that I can't affect those billions, but at the time I questioned God also, I thought, how can an all loving God um, allow this duplicity, allow this con to have gone on? Or not only Islam, um, also uh, Hebrew Israelites. I went to the park because I, I, my, my background with Islam is that I've read the Quran. Um, I didn't like doing it. I didn't find it as interesting as other scriptures that I've read in terms of its content. What I did find disturbing was the stuff attributed to Isa, who is the uh, Muslim Jesus. And I thought that for such a well recorded character within history, surely those gospel writers and those early Christians would have had access to these records of, you know, the uh, apocryphal writings of him speaking from the cradle and yet they're kind of mutilated and inserted into the Quran, which also showed me that the Quran isn't divine revelation. If it's come from earlier Christian or heretical Christian writings. Yeah, and I've, I've got a lot of friends, or I had a lot of friends who are Muslim. I can be a bit challenging when it comes to just sort of dinner talk, but um, the ones that are true friends are still my friends and I'm 
slowly working with the Holy Spirit to try and influence them to come to Christ. So, so yeah. It's okay. You, you go down to the corner most every Sunday, am I correct? Yes, I do. Apart from once when it was closed, um, this week it's supposed to be closed because of the coronavirus, but we're still in the UK allowed out once a day to exercise. <laughs> so I may find myself in Hyde Park with some joggers on and a camera. So, yeah. Right. So you really are excited about the Speaker's Corner. You like the environment there. You like the give and take back and forth. I've looked at some of your videos and you're very good with that. I think that you have a, a knack for that. And, and, and it's this kind of thing. This is why I get excited, Kate, because I remember when I left in 2017, we're now in 2020, we're in the middle of this coronavirus. Oh, you're in your place. I'm in my home, thousands of miles away. And uh, I'm in what we call academic isolation. So I've already been in isolation even before they, they shut down uh, for the quarantine here in Pennsylvania. But I remember back then, I could not get people to come to Speaker's Corner in large numbers, Christians. And even less so, could I get people to actually engage? We could get the crowds there. We could get people at the base of the ladder. Uh, but we, I couldn't really get people to speak forth and to say things. You are able to do that now. And one of the things that I love about what you're doing now is you're actually putting videos up. You're taking your camera. You're going to be doing it this Sunday. You're taking your camera with you, and you're actually showing on the camera this engagement that you have back and forth, which means you're putting your face above the parapet. You're putting your face into a public context. An awful lot of Christians don't like to do that. Even you just said you were reticent to do this even beginning when you at the many years ago when you had Muslim friends, you were fearful that you would hurt their sensibilities. Uh, you didn't yeah. want to be overbearing. And that's, I think, the attitude for an awful lot of Christians. And that's why it's so difficult to find people like you who are willing to actually go in front of the camera, even record themselves. And yes, you could record yourself being bombasted, being lambasted, uh, losing the argument. That's a fear, a huge fear for an awful lot of people. And I think one of the other fears is that Islam is so different. It's difficult to understand because we aren't taught about Islam in Britain, here in the United States, in the West. We know very little about the Quran. Even you said... When no, you it's the religion of peace. So it's, that's what we're told all the time. Um, we, I was astounded when I started the Quran, the amount of verses that are so diametrically opposed to the gospel that I know, um, you know, love your enemies, pray for those who curse you, um, all the good stuff. And then I read, fight the unbeliever, kill them where you find them. Um, and I just thought, there's no way this guy, there's just no way. Like I, I knew that anyway, but, um, I think because of the Abrahamic thing, it's really difficult because Jews and Christians who are not familiar with the text, I think for one, they believe it's Abrahamic and I don't, um, but only by going through this book and just cross-referencing it to all the times that it's clearly incorrect, I won't say heretical, although maybe if you take Isa to be Christ, you could say it's heretical. Well, it um, certainly is heretical in that it really com yeah. confuses who well, it's God It's opposed is. to church doctrine, yeah, for sure. If, if, yeah. if in the Quran, Allah never enters time and space, that already is, shows it's a different God than we're talking he about. He can't walk in the garden. He can't um, die on a cross. Have any relationship with humanity. If God, in the form of Jesus Christ, and remember the Quran goes over and over and it tries to dispel this notion that Jesus is God or that he is, uh, that he is one with Allah and also confuses the Trinity in chapter 5, verse 116. But most importantly, as you just pointed out, if God did not die on the cross, if Jesus did not die on the cross, then we're all damned. That's huge heresy right there, because that's the central, that's really at the center of everything we believe, isn't it? That is Christianity. That's the, um, you know, I've had arguments with people about Christmas and the, the nativity, and but East, the crucifixion and the resurrection, without those, it's mm. fine to be Christ-like, um, but it will avail you absolutely nothing, We're even potentially with you, literally, you, you can't, if the fine isn't paid, if the crimes aren't, um, met with justice, the, the mercy and the justice that meet at the cross, without them, we're all in big, big trouble. Because so, I know that I, yeah. Okay, really, this has been something that's, you've only done this for a few months. You're just beginning this channel. And I want to thank you. God bless you. I've asked so many people to do what you're doing, and they just won't do it. 
and you are one of Can the. Can I people. just let you know, Jay, that it's all it's in a there's a chain of events, but you were at the beginning, I think, because um, Bob, who's the guy who goes to the park, he came as the result of watching you, um, and as he came, you left, unfortunately. And then it was as a result of his video calling Christians that I came and then he went on a sabbatical completely coincidentally. So um, I feel that God's overall plan for that park is to have big mouth people. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I speak for myself, but your voice is, do you practice that voice? Do, have you always had those lungs? Like, okay. I will tell I, you the answer that it has nothing to do with my big voice, it has everything to do with the fact, I mean, uh, my big voice is there. I have an enormously loud voice, louder than anybody else. But it has everything to do with my heritage. It has everything to do with where I grew up. I grew up in the Himalaya mountains uh, at 7,000 feet. And every time I had to go to school, I had to run up 500 feet to school. If I forgot something, I'd run right back down and run right back up again. Which means I grew up, as my body was growing bigger, as it was getting older, from the time that I was, well, I started in kindergarten there and I started in first grade. So from the time of six years on, I just got larger and larger, larger lungs, which means today I have five liter lungs. For my body size, I only, I only need three and a half. So I've got yeah. a liter and a half more than I need, which gives me that volume. That's why it's nothing, it's nothing that I have done. It's all where I grew up. And that's why I'm a long distance runner. I was the top runner in my university uh, back in Pennsylvania. Uh, I, I have four records for long distance running all because of these lungs. That's why many of your Kenyans and your Ethiopians are such good long distance runners because they all grew up at 7,000 feet. So I yeah. don't take any credit for it. It all has to do with where I grew up. Nonetheless, the Lord has given me these lungs so that I can use He's them. put you there yeah. entirely for that reason, to give you the lungs to come. And, uh, I did that for 25 come. years. I was on that ladder for 20 of those 25 years. Well, no, sorry, about 22 of those 25 years. So it has done well. But I'm getting back to... And, and maybe we can end this episode with, with this thing. I think it's so good, Kay, that you finally are going public, that you are using and get, letting your face be on in front of the camera. And you're asking the right questions. And I hope others that are watching this will be encouraged by you. Uh, you don't have training. You don't have the background. You just love God and you just love the fact that you want to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ with your Muslim friends, many of whom you have grown up with, and you love them, and you want to continue to, to engage with them because you want to bring them home. And I hope for the, yeah. those others who are watching this, that this is something that they can also be encouraged by, and that others will start following in your footsteps. Hopefully. There was one particular Sunday when I was so encouraged. Um, I don't know if there was an event or not, other than the park, but it just seemed to me that every few feet were Christians on ladders or just preaching. They were along the, and it was, um, yeah, there were people come down from like the north of the UK and it was just, I think it was the weather potentially, but it was really nice as opposed to, which is still nice. The more Muslims, the better really, because they're more, pre like I don't assume that they, you know, people say to me, oh, you must dislike Muslims. How can and I think, well, if I disliked them, I'd stay at home and not be insulted and kind of ridiculed for my, like, I just wouldn't mind if they, you know, if they get salvation or not. But it's, yeah, it's, and people say, well, you have to love your enemies. And you do, but they're not my enemies. I just, I don't like the thought that on judgment day, I could be standing there and not have said what, you know, I've just got to plant one seed to one person watching on the camera, to one person standing in front of me, and then let the Holy Spirit do the, the hard work. God bless you, Kay. Thanks a lot. Listen, we're going to do a number of these episodes. Uh, do you want to go through some of the subjects that we're going to go into so that yeah. we can go ahead and entice people to come back? Yeah, I'm going to have to, off the, uh, off the cuff, give them topics, but I've got a list of questions. So I imagine um, theology is one of them. Uh, less broadly the differences uh if there are any between yahweh and allah uh predestination whether or not if you lose faith outwardly you can be snatched uh from the father's arms as we're told we can't um the purpose of prayer uh because i think prayer is vastly overlooked it's been taken out of schools it's being denigrated it's ridiculed um favorite bible verses the reason women in leadership roles within the church so politics, I suppose, baptism, 
uh, Muhammad, you might have heard of him, some guy, seventh century, uh, quite influential, I'm told. Um, God's opinion on certain uh, crimes and sins, and they're no longer crimes, but they were um, societally, and how your approach maybe has changed toward Muslims over the years. So basically, interactive stuff as in how do you engage because you do it so well. Um, so I've got a few questions on that. And then on the Quran, the gospel. And I think that's about it because I ran out of ideas, I suppose. Listen, we'll get into this. I, I want to thank you for inviting me on. This is your show. This is K Soko Films, uh, K-A-Y. And uh, I, because I belong to Fander Films, uh, we are going to be, we're, we are colleagues in Christ. And so we have, we will be actually, be, um, I will be supporting and I'll actually be pushing your uh, channel uh, there on Fander Films so many other people can come over. This is going to be fun. These are questions. Some of them I've not even heard before. These are brand new kind of questions. This is new kind of material. And this is good, Kay, that you're going to, that you, now the people have heard this, they can uh, respond, come up and see these. I, I assume you're going to be putting these up every few days. Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, um, even though I can talk for England, as it were, I kind of run out of stuff. And now that I potentially don't have the park to go to, I just wanted to make sure because I've, it's, I've only had a channel for a few weeks, but I've built up maybe a couple of hundred uh, subscribers. So they're pretty uh, vocal in the comments and they, they take me to task quite often and kind of keep me uh, motivated at least. So I'd like to make sure there's something, especially when people are in lockdown. Well, and um, I know here. myself that I used to uh, find a channel and just watch the whole backlog. And there was no lockdown at that time. That was just me wanting to know different people's opinions of Jesus and see where I differed and find out maybe why they felt the way they did. Great, so, yeah. I can't wait to get started. This is Jay over here in Pennsylvania, thousands of miles away from you. Isn't this great how technology brings us together? 